play together. I think it's just a difference in errors. And I agree, like, communication is a huge part because even me now as a coach, you know, I'm not the, – the only thing I promise kids when I'm recruiting them is that this is going to be the hardest thing that you ever did in your life. Like, that's the only thing I'm going to promise you. Yeah. Like, opportunity is what you make of it. I mean, I play the people who do – who deserve to play based on what we're doing. I obviously want to win. So I'm going to play the guys I think I'm going to help us win. I don't care about, I don't care if we don't like each other. I would like for us to like each other. Of course, I would love for yeah. us to love each other. That's the goal. But I'm hired here to graduate kids and win basketball games. And we yeah. definitely don't graduate kids. <laughs> so we definitely graduating kids. That's a hundred percent fact. So now it's the winning basketball games part. So I don't care if we don't like each other. I don't care if you don't like me. We we are here to win the basketball games when it comes to basketball. So mm-hmm. I think that's a great point. With you know, you don't got to promise you're gonna start, but to show that yeah. there is a pathway to yeah, exactly. Basketball. That's you all know. I wanted, you know, and, and 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 that's all I wanted because, like I said, at, at my school, everybody went D two or D one. We had a really good program at the school I was at. So for me to go there, I, I really wanted to at least feel like okay, I had a chance, but. Neither here nor there. So as a coach, I know you coach. So I want to get your view on this. Say you have a kid that's really not playing a lot, right? And I had an argument with this guy about people that don't play. Do you, how will you get them not to quit or still love the game? You know what I'm saying? Like that guy that's not playing a lot because you might need him. You can, because I feel, this is how I feel. I feel even if a guy's not playing, there should be a communication thing as far as you might get playing. Time. You know what I mean? Like, do you communicate? Do you do anything with these guys that don't play? Yeah. So number one thing I think is roster size. Cause I think it's important because that's a good a, point. Yeah. You know, the head coach, it's, it's, it's hard to manage 10 people. That's, yeah. Right. But you got to have 10 because of practice and in college, you got to have 13 because of injuries and all that stuff. So, you got to have 13. So, like, I'm somebody who never wants to have 15 kids on a roster because yeah. it's impossible to have the temperature of each kid, which you need to have. Because 15 in my CSI team, that was the best team in CSI history, I really believe 15 was as important as whoever won was, which was Jordan Young for us. But 15 was very important because they had to bust their ass in practice for us to get better, and they were incredible teammates during the games. I can't tell you how many times – during the game, I miss a couple of shots. My head will hang for a little bit, and you hear somebody off the bench like, "Yo, you got that next one? Are you, he can't guard you!" Like, you know what I'm saying? And and yeah. that goes a long way, you know. That yeah. goes a long way from your teammates because your coaches are not always gonna talk like that, you know. They might. You, yeah. I didn't have a coach like this, but they might. You know, you miss another shot, they throw their hands up. You know, you see that, and you know that could affect your mentality. But so I try to have 13 kids. Number one, number two is. I have a rule that you have to come by my office every day. So wow, yeah, yeah that's interesting because you know I never really see that. That's a good man. So, I like yeah, that because listen, during the day I'm caught up in stuff. The kids have class; they caught up in stuff, you know. So I put on my door. I put the offensive emphasis of the day and the defensive emphasis of the day and a quote of the day. So you have to come up and check it because I'm going to ask in the beginning of the practice for somebody to tell me what it is. Um, by doing that, you know, they just think it's like, okay, like he's going to quiz us on this. And it's, it had nothing to do with that because what's the offensive emphasis on the day, uh, score the basketball. That's every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Mm -hmm. what it does though, is it allows the kids before practice for them to stop in and say, what's up? Wow. Yeah. That's great, man. I like that. You get the temperature of a kid because they entitled to have bad days, right? So yeah. you get the temperature and you might have a conversation with a kid because he's like, you're like, what's up? And this could be the most talkative kid in the world. Now he's not talking. You're like, what happened, man? Your, your dog died. Your girl broke up with you. And, you know, you could maybe they don't got it. So that might be a day because I'm on kids hard. That might be a day where I might walk in with my coaches and go, hey, pay attention to Jay. Um, he might not have it today, you know? Yeah. Like, we're not going to lower our standard for you. This is This is – professionalism but I might not I might not push that today or I might grab you yeah. after practice you know I might go to cafeteria with you or something you know yeah yeah I like you. that so that's what that's I, yeah that's important that's a big thing but as far as playing time goes I expect that everybody wants to play um even the kids yeah. at the end of the bench who are never playing 
I know they want to yeah. play, you know? So it's important that I have an open door for yeah. communication. That's that's key, yeah. Open, but we, we have a rule, do not approach me 24 hours before a game or after a game because you know we're both emotional and that's not it's not going to end up in the best thing. We yeah. just want a game. You didn't play. You want to talk about you. I think that's selfish. You can wait 24 hours and then we can yeah. have that conversation. So we're all hype about winning the game. You're sitting there moping. I'm not <laughs> yeah. I'm never taking that the right way. Never. And then things are going to be said in the heat of the moment. That yeah. You no, you're, you're right. I, didn't, I never thought about that. That's a good point. That's a good point because you're right, especially right at the moment. You might be really upset and don't realize what happened, why you didn't play. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and I, I agree with that. No no idea. And, um, and um, so, you know, and it's not foolproof. You're still going to have issues. You know, I've been on 10-game winning streaks as a coach. I think it was last year. I mean, not like this past year, so two years ago. And I had one kid who was playing but was really unhappy with his role at the moment. And from my standpoint, as somebody who's been a team first person my whole entire life, I just couldn't understand it. But then I had to take a step back. I had to sleep on it and wake up and go, okay, I don't agree with it, but let's have a dialogue about this. And this is what I'm yeah. thinking. Like, yo, I know you played this many minutes before, but now we're hot and we're hot doing this. So I'm not changing anything because we won 10 in a row. Yeah. So I'm not changing, like, whether it's right or wrong, I'm not changing anything. And that's my right as the coach. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, but in the end, we won 10 basketball games in a row. So, yeah, this kid might not be performing, but for whatever reason, he's been on the court in these minutes, and we've been winning these games. I'm not messing with that. So, But here's the problem, though. This is the problem. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong, but this is what I hate. So I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm so-and-so or whatever. I'm doing my thing in practice. I'm chilling in practice. I want to play. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, the coach would be like, you know, they're not going to play you or whatever. Now, my issue is, that's fine. Don't play me. But I need to know what's going on so I know what I'm doing wrong. And a lot of coaches don't do that. And I, there was times where, when I was in college, that happened to me. You know, people fell off. So I know it's selfish, but I was kind of happy. I'm like, okay, cool. This is my time to shine. So I'm killing the practice. Now my confidence is up. I'm getting better. And I didn't play one game. And I went to the locker room, and you can see them. My, the way my temperament, is, my temperament is, I'm always happy and energetic, and I put myself in the locker, and I was really upset. And he's seen that, and he talked to me, and he said, Jay, you're doing well in practice, but I have confidence because you don't know the plays. Now, remember, I came from a key. Mm -hmm. In college, there's so many plays. I was nervous. I didn't understand them, so I did me. And all I thought was, I'm killing, so I should be playing. Forget about these plays. Mm -hmm. But him talking to me and telling me that, I said, hmm, that's a good point. So I got my teammates together, and we worked on learning the plays so that way I would be able to get in games. But had he not talked to me, I would be the coach is stupid. I'm killing. I'm playing better. Why are you not playing me? Like, that's all I kept thinking about. So, without, without, that, to piggyback on what you were saying, you had your 10 game winning streak. But the kids probably, like I said, I'm playing devil's advocate because I know how he's probably thinking. I'm doing my thing in practice. I'm just as good as so and so. Right. At least tell me why I'm not playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, oh, that's what yeah. I'm saying. The communication should be there. And to be transparent about that particular situation or in general is that what I tell my kids all the time is that I'm going to treat you fairly. Everybody don't get treated equally. Like every situation is not equal. That's so, true too. Yeah. Like I get it. People, the one thing I hate to hear a lot is like somebody tell me, if you say, why are you not playing? Somebody say, I don't know. I'm killing in practice. Well, killing in practice in the preseason and killing the practice at the end of the season has two different weights, right? Because the yes. preseason, you're fighting for spots. You're, there's unknown. There's no games. So all you can go off of is practice. So that holds way more weight than, like, listen, I was never coming out of the game in college. If the third string point guard busts my ass the day before the championship game and the week yeah. before the game, yeah, 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 that's what you're saying, yeah. You're not playing. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, do, that doesn't mean that – and I could be going – I'm not saying I'm dogging it because I'm playing or – He's yeah, because he's not playing. It's just like 
if you have good players on your team, you should be getting the best of your teammates at times. And you may even get them consistently. Yeah. But what does this person do for us that helps our team go? And I think you're starting to see a lot of that with, like, lineup plus minuses and all these analytics and basketball. Yeah. It's just like, you can look at, um, I forget, dude, he played with Russ and KD, light-skinned boy, Anthony Robeson. Um, mm. He can he shoot like forty percent from the free throw line. Like he, yeah, he, he can't, can't shoot, shoot, which is weird, right? yeah. Right, but he's an NBA starter, and there's so many people in the NBA that are better than him. But for that team and that role he plays, he's extremely valuable for them. So yeah, yeah there's definitely people. I mean, they had they had Deion Waiters at the time. Like there was definitely people on the bench who were like, "Yo, I'm better than him," and you probably were. But being next to Russ and KD, they ain't need another yeah. scorer. <laughs> they needed somebody who was going to take that pride on defense. And a lot of times, kids aren't mature enough to understand that. Like, yeah, they're not. They're not. But they, kids, yeah, they don't. Like I didn't. Like I said, I didn't know. All I seen was guys failed off. That's a chance for me to open up. I'm probably the best player in practice, and I felt I earned it. But like I said, when I came in games, and I didn't know that. I'm doing my own thing. I'm run, running my own plays because I didn't understand certain things. But I'm doing me. And, and then when we had games where, say, I wasn't playing a lot, when I came in, I was in some offense. Right. So, like I said, if the coach don't talk to me and don't tell me what I'm doing wrong and don't communicate with me, I'm going to just have an attitude. I'm going to bring the whole team down. And then at the end of the day, I'm not getting better. The team's not getting better. And I'm going to just quit. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I think communication is key. Like that, it needs to be a, a dialogue. You know what I'm one saying? Of the, yeah, one of, one of the biggest tenants in our program is conflict. Like we have to have conflict and you have to be yeah. comfortable having uncomfortable conversations. So we have a culture like the freshmen, when you come in the program, you told one thing, shut up and listen. You're not allowed to say anything. Don't say nothing. Don't, don't comment on what we should be doing during the games yeah. because – Hard, you need to just learn how to listen. Learn how to listen. Learn how to everything's moving fast. Just shut up. Don't say nothing to me. Don't say nothing to your teammates. If they feel that way, that's between y'all. That's not my business. The kids police themselves. Yeah. They get in an argument in practice. We Sometimes practice will stop for five, ten minutes because the kids are arguing because they're trying to get something right. And I won't say nothing. And we may need to go on stuff, but they need to get that out because they need to be able to yeah. argue and be – cool with it like that doesn't mean i don't like you like if i say yo call the screen out that doesn't mean yeah. i hate you that means i need to know the screen is coming because we can't have this happen in the next yeah. we need to get it right so there once you pass being a freshman in, in our program you're a sophomore you can say whatever you want to me and by whatever i literally mean you can say whatever you want to me now i'm not gonna pull rank you know i can easily pull rank and yeah. shut up, or no, you're not doing this. Choose your words correctly, especially with yeah. your emotions. So if you feel a certain type of way towards me, say it, because I'm not going to hold back how I feel about you. I'm not going to say anything to disrespect you, at least not purposely. And yeah. if I feel like I crossed that line, I'm going to be the first one to apologize, because it's not about that. But yeah. I've had players, I had a junior who's going to be a senior this year, stop practice the day after the game, and say, hey, Coach, I got something to say to you. And I said, what's up? And he said, this is exactly what he said to me. He said, I feel what you did yesterday was a bitch move. And <laughs> you, so you would think, right? That yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, I'll right? never say that to a coach, but I get it. Right. But he really felt strongly about it. He wasn't trying to be disrespectful. He yeah. was calling it out for what he thought it was. And we had a dialogue. I wasn't offended by his words. Mm -hmm. I knew what he was trying to say. He was very emotional about his sentiment and we had a conversation we hugged it yeah. out that's, that's great. it and then we started practice so it doesn't i'm i'm not saying that could work for everybody um but that's how patoza I mean, we didn't talk to patoza like that that was not happening but that patoza let us voice our opinions so if i want to run a play in a huddle and the kid goes no nah, we need to slide the ball screen for son over here because he hot and that's a bad matchup yeah Y'all got it. Y'all on the court, just be responsible for it because y'all playing. And that's how I felt when I played. Like, don't – we're not in a groove and I'm trying to get Blue Team McGraw to basketball and now we're trying to run a post-up just because we're trying to run a post-up. 
Like, no, yeah. I'm going to wave that off. So I feel that when, especially my point guards, and I feel like I have one of the best ones in the country, if I call something and he looks at me crazy, like, nah, like, I'm about to, I'm about to bust this kid's ass in front of me. Let me go. I'll let him go. That's that's how I coach. Yeah. You know? No, I'm not. Sometimes, I, I, sometimes, that's, you that's get, sometimes you get ugly basketball because the kids are, you know, but can't nobody who ever plays for me, won't nobody, I made it a pack, can't nobody say that I ever held you back. Now, I will tell you what you're not good at because the stats will show it or in practice. Yeah. You're you shooting 15% from three. Don't shoot threes. That's – you can't argue with me with that. You, you're not yeah. – the ball's not going in. Stop shooting threes, period. You can do whatever you want. Just yeah. not that. Can't do that. Um, but you ain't going to tell me I held you back. You can do whatever you want as long as you can do it. I think it's a simple game. Yeah. No, I agree with you. So what kind of kids do you recruit? Like, when you go after kids, do you have a certain – you know what I'm saying? Like, skill sets you look for, or do you, like, there's certain guys you pick? Because do you even look? Because I think a lot of coaches make this mistake too. When they recruit guys, they recruit them on skill, but not mentality or yeah. the type of personality, personality wise, too. Like, yeah. how do you recruit? Who yeah, do, you, do you go after a certain type? Great question. So, number one for me is school. And Everybody say you got to have good grades and stuff, but grades don't show me intellect. Intellect shows me intellect. Grades show me discipline. So if you if you get the grades done in high school, you're showing me that you're disciplined because you're going to need yeah. to be disciplined to be, to be successful in life. You have to have some sort of discipline, right? And yeah, yeah, I agree. In my household, my dad was in the military. I know you know about that discipline. Yeah. Everything, right? Yes. So, so grades are important to me because they reflect discipline okay forget about doing well in school because we can take care of that um once you get here we can give you good habits two is just a high basketball iq i prefer that and it's probably because that's how i was as a player and i didn't like playing with people who just couldn't be in the right spots like me and you the way you're describing yourself we probably yeah. would have butted heads like crazy yeah like, yeah for sure you know? but that, that, that i blame that not to be, but i blame a lot of that on the key not to say right. i loved high school but you didn't, we didn't have plays. Right. So and when I go to college and I get a book of plays, I'm sitting there like, this is going to mess my game up. I just want to know what I can do. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah so, so that's why it's big for me. Like yeah. kids IQ, we, I care about where they come from because I'm not going to – I know all kids freshmen need work, but there are some things that will take longer than others and will be frustrating for me. Yeah, really for the kid. So it's let's say I was recruiting you, and you were coming from a program that didn't run any plays. It was just up and yeah, down, just back and forth. Yeah, up and down. That's it. I, I'm not. You could have all the ability in the world, but with all things being equal, I'm probably not gonna take you because yeah, it, it's gonna be hard to play the way that we're trying to play. And that doesn't mean you're not good. That just yeah. means like I have a preference, right? We yeah. pass over kids every year that are that are good. It, we're never gonna. We, you can always take a better kid. Everybody in the country can always find a better kid. Even yeah, Duke, yeah. No, you're right. You can always find a better kid, but it's like what fits for what we're trying to do. So IQ is important, and um, loving the game, not like mm. you know, you gotta love the game, loving the work. It's really the work, you know. How much do you love the yeah. weight room? I hate the weight room, but I love the results. So you know, you gotta want to get the work because I'm not recruiting a finished product. I'm recruiting somebody who. Is a is a ball of clay, and that we're gonna mold. But I'm not. I don't care what coach you are. You can't just turn the kid into the greatest thing ever. The kid yeah. gotta turn himself into the greatest thing ever. So it's gotta be a. It's not a mutual partnership. It's gotta be eighty twenty the kid, and I'm just giving stuff to help that eighty like percent. Yeah. I'm not. I can't take credit for any kid. The kid's gotta do the work. And if the kid don't want to do the work in high school, if he's not, if I go to high school practice, I try to get there thirty minutes early. The girls are probably yeah. back to JV. And it, That's how it was, tell. yeah. Yep, you could tell. You got that kid you're recruiting. He, he in the gym already. He dressed. Or, you know, he not just walking in late or walking in with his headphones. And, like, the kid's on the side stretching. Even if he's faking it because he knows I'm there, the kid understands it. Because you got to fake certain aspects of life. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Kid. You know what I mean? So, at of least course. the kid knows how to play that game. And I, I admire that. So, um, and then just... The culture we have is a culture of um, 
we're, we're really – everybody says family. I don't like saying it. It's just like we have coaches that get on coaches, coaches that joke on players, players that joke on coaches. We eat our pregame meals, and we have no so- cell phones. So we're away from our cell phones for like an hour and a half because we're just <clears throat> a combo. We're joking on each other. And everybody's not made for that. And that is the yeah. one thing that I will protect always is the type of kids we have in the program. And I might just not think you fit there. And I've had plenty of conversations yeah. with people, whether it be on Staten Island and sitting there like, oh, you got this kid and this kid is better than this kid. I'm not going to argue with that one. Like, maybe he is, but that doesn't mean that he fits here. Yeah, um, no, no, I agree. Because I, I think, like you said, like I probably wouldn't fit there, like you said, because – I was really talented and energetic, but the good thing I had, what you just mentioned, was a discipline. Like, I went to McKee, I lived in St. Mark's, which is like right across the street. I never cut school class one time. And people always did it because everybody lived near there. I never cut, I, did, I, I was practicing. And even like I told you in college, a lot of people would take offense to the coach telling me, you don't know the place. I don't have confidence in you coming in the game. You what I did was I got my team, so it was like a family too. I said, look, can y'all come after practice and work with me and show me how this, this is supposed to happen? And they worked with me, and I was after practice for two hours, after two-hour practice for two weeks straight. And then I got it down. I said, okay, cool, I got this. And I started playing more. But that's discipline. Because you go into practice, and then you go on to practice again two hours, and the guy stayed after practice for me. So I appreciate my team for that, and they helped me out, but it worked out. But that discipline I had, I had all of that. So I think a lot of kids is missing that, not to pick myself up, but they missing that sacrifice, you know what I'm saying, and, and stuff like that. And honestly, I don't think it's really on the kids. And, and what we really look at is who are, you know, we can't say parents because everybody's different family life, right? But yeah. who are the important people in their lives? So that's true things, too. Go, things go wrong, they're going to pick up the phone and call somebody. So we need to get to know those people because I need to know that we're aligned and we might not be aligned. Like I sit yeah. and tell every parent or guardian that sits in my office that I'm going to have a foot in your kid's ass. How do you feel? Yeah. About that? Um, if he calls you and tells you I'm getting on him, he's a million percent right. That If he tells you a story about me, he's a million percent right. Now I need to know mom, dad, Oh, these the type of people yeah. that when they get the call, they're going to be like, oh, he don't know what he's talking about. Just come home. We just transfer. <laughs> That's alarming, you know? If somebody, yeah. it's cool for you to think your kid is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but you got to have some sort of humility and get over yourself because the yeah. team aspect, everybody's coming from being the best or one of the best players yeah. in, in so high gotta, school. Yeah. You got to have some sort of humility. And you watch college basketball all the time. The teams that win are not always the teams that are the most talented. So yeah, no, you're right, yeah. They're the best teams. And all those kids are way better than the kids that are in my program. So what makes you think that you're everything, you know? so No, no, I agree. I agree.